Semper Fi, everyone. Welcome to the latest installment of Recon Jack. I'm your host, U.S. Marine veteran and historian, Chuck Lynch. On today's episode, I'll discuss United States Marine Corps General and 13th Commandant of the Marine Corps, John A. Lejeune. He is often referred to in the present day as the greatest of all leathernecks and the Marine's Marine. Due to these sentiments and his outstanding career within the United States Marine Corps, as a Marine officer, Marine Corps Base Camp Lejeune is named in his honor. I was fortunate enough to briefly train here with the Infantry Training Battalion, School of Infantry East, at the adjacent complex of Camp Geiger. At some point in the near future, I will dive into the history of this camp, as well as General Roy Geiger, who was a Marine aviator and commander of the 1st Amphibious Corps, 3rd Amphibious Corps, and the 10th United States Army Division during World War II. John Archer Lejeune was born 10 January 1867 in Louisiana, and upon graduating from the U.S. Naval Academy in 1888, he was commissioned at the as a second lieutenant in the United States Marine Corps on 25 July 1890. Lejeune would see duty stateside at several marine barracks along the East Coast as well as sea service on board numerous naval vessels and even duty in the countries of Panama, Cuba, and Mexico where he participated in the United States occupation of Veracruz. During the early years of Lejeune's career he would quickly move through the officers ranks. He returned to Marine Corps headquarters in Washington, D.C. in December 1914 to become the assistant commandant of the Marine Corps to Major General George Barnett, commandant of the Marine Corps. Lejeune would eventually be promoted to Brigadier General on 29 August 1916. With the April 1917 American entry into World War I, Brigadier General Lejeune assumed command of the newly constructed Marine Barracks Quantico, Virginia. However, his overseas service was inevitable, and in June 1918, he arrived at Brest, France. He was further promoted to Major General on 1 July 1918. Upon reporting to General J.J. Blackjack Pershing, Commander-in-Chief of the American Expeditionary Force on the Western Front, Major General Lejeune was assigned to succeed Charles R. Borman in command of the 164th Brigade of the U.S. Army's 32nd Infantry Division, but later assumed command of the 4th Marine Brigade, part of the Army's 2nd Division, immediately following the attack of the division in the Battle of Soissons on 28 July 1918. Lejeune assumed command of the entire division and became the second Marine officer to hold an Army divisional command with Marine Brigadier General Charles A. Doyen having previously commanded the division for two weeks. Lejeune would com continue command of the division during its victorious action at the Battle of San Miguel and until August 1919 when the division was demobilized nine months after the end of the war. Lejeune was appointed as Major General and Commandant of the Marine Corps on 1 July 1920. Subsequent to that time, he left his headquarters at Washington, D.C. several times for tours of inspection in Haiti, Santo Domingo, Cuba, Puerto Rico, to the West Coast, and elsewhere. Upon the expiration of his second term as Commandant, Lejeune indicated his desire to not retire from the United States Marine Corps. Now that's what I call a fight marine, but was relieved as commandant in March 1929. On 10 November 1929, he retired from the Marine Corps after 39 years of honorable service. In September 1939, when Adolf Hitler's troops invaded Poland, he wrote to Thomas Holcomb, the current commandant of the Marine Corps, and volunteered to serve once more given his alarm over the crisis in Europe. The offer was gently declined given his age. In February 1942, Lejeune was advanced to the rank of Lieutenant General on the Marine Corps' retired list. He passed away on 20 November 1942 in the Union Memorial Hospital, Baltimore, Maryland, and was interred in the Arlington National Cemetery with full military honors. Marine Corps Base Camp Lejeune in North Carolina was named in his honor during World War II and is a 246 square mile U.S. military training facility in Jacksonville, North Carolina. The 14 miles of beaches make the major 
make the base a major area for amphibious assault training, and its location between deep water ports of Wilmington and Moorhead City allows for quick deployments of the 2nd Marine Division. The main base is supplemented by six satellite facilities, including Marine Corps Air Station New River, Camp Geiger, Stone Bay, Courthouse Bay, Camp Johnson, and the Greater Sandy Run Training Area. The Marine Corps Port Facility is in Beaufort at the southern tip of Radio Island between North Carolina State Port in Moorhead City and the Marine Science Laboratories on Pivers Island in Beaufort and remains military property, although it's occupied only during military port operations. Camp Lejeune encompasses 156,000 acres with its beaches capable of supporting amphibious operations, 32 gun positions, 48 tactical landing zones, three state-of-the-art training facilities for military operations in urban terrain, and 80 live fire ranges to include the Greater Sandy Run training area. Military forces from around the world come to Camp Lejeune on a regular basis for bilateral and NATO-sponsored exercises. In April 1941, construction was approved on an 11,000-acre tract in Onslow County, North Carolina. On 1 May of that year, Lieutenant Colonel William P.T. Hill began construction on Marine Barracks New River. The first base headquarters was in a summer cottage on Monford Point and then moved to Hadnot Point in 1942. One of the satellite facilities of Camp Lejeune served for a while as a third boot camp for the Marines, in addition to Paris Island and San Diego. That facility, Montford Point, was established after President Franklin Roosevelt signed Executive Order 8802 on 25 June 1941, which prohibits ethnic or racial discrimination in the nation's defense industry based on race, creed, color, or national origin. Between 1942 and 1949, a brief era of segregated training for Marines, the camp at Montford Point trained 20,000 dark gray Marine recruits. As the United States engaged in the Korean War, manpower was at a premium, and by 1953, the number of dark gray Marines had grown from 1900 in 1949 to 17,000. After President Harry Truman signed Executive Order 9981 on 26 July 1948, the military was ordered to abolish discrimination and fully integrate. In 1974, Montford Point was renamed Camp Gilbert 8 Johnson after drill instructor Sergeant Major Johnson and became the home of the Marine Corps Combat Service Support Schools. I hope you enjoyed today's episode of Recon Jack and perhaps you learned something new. I've certainly only scratched the surface of some of the topics discussed and will definitely cover more of the Montfort Point Marines and Sergeant Major Hash Mark Johnson. Stay tuned for more episodes as I continue to explore the hallowed history, traditions, and individuals of the United States Marine Corps. Please, as always, feel free to like this video, subscribe to my channel, Click that notification bell and leave a comment in the section below. I definitely enjoy interacting with you folks and seeing the growth of this channel. And if you haven't already, please feel free to tell a friend or family member as well as subscribe to Real History. Without Jared and Andy's help, I never would have gotten to this point already. And until next time, Semper Fi and carry on.